Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks to Bandai Namco, we've got a review of Dragon Ball Z Karkarot. No Glenn, not Dragon Ball Z. This was written by Asdin, so a big thanks to him. Spanning over three decades, thousands of comics, toys and memorabilia, the Dragon Ball Z series has been dubbed and aired in over 80 countries worldwide. This has created a massive following for the action anime, and with a total of 57 video games bearing the brand's name, you might think that nothing new could be added to the franchise. Now, I grew up in the 90s and remember the entire series vividly, and the intro is held by fans as a bit of a national anthem. Previously released on other platforms, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot has now landed on Nintendo's hybrid console with added content based on the new series. Is this game's power over 9000 or is it going to spirit bomb? Let's find out. The game split into four storylines based on the most iconic moments of the series, these being Cyan, the Namek, the Android, and lastly, the Boo Saga. I've blatantly said those wrong, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. Sorry, Asdin. Those familiar with the series will know what to expect, and fans will enjoy the added plot that explains certain never-seen-before stories in the show. If you've not watched the anime before, you'll be happy to know that the game is teeming with quality cutscenes mirroring the show quite closely. One nice touch was how each ending chapter had a preview of the next one, like they did in the show, making the gameplay a unique, immersive, interactive anime experience. You'll also be able to fill and check out the Z Encyclopedia, which further explains terms, character bios and so on. Unlocking entries will reward the player with collectible cards and D medals. The story centers on Goku and his friends and the events that take place in the anime. At its core, it's a frantic fighting game with light RPG mechanics dribbled on top. You'll be exploring different regions that are presented as large sandbox areas, where you can fish, hunt, collect Z-orbs, and carry out side quests. By collecting different coloured Z-orbs that are scattered in the sky, lakes, grasslands, and mountains, there are also timed Z-orbs and, as the name suggests, need collecting quickly before they disappear, and for those swift enough, grab the Universal Rainbow one as well. Now, as you carry out battles and quests, your character will gain experience points and level up. This will allow you to upgrade and unlock certain moves and skills by using the collected orbs as currency. Some characters offer their aid by gifting their soul emblem, a special character coin, or grant access to one of the seven community boards. Each board specializes on a particular set of perks, and adding more soul emblems to a particular board increases its level and rewards. These range from extra experience points, better defense, or better cooking success rates. You can also group these together for additional bonuses, meaning that experimentation and moving these tokens around for better synergy is encouraged, and it was probably the deepest RPG element in the game. In between the story and the battles, you'll have an intermission. This is a great opportunity to gather, train and carry out side quests. Although these activities help create a change of pace within the game, it did feel like they were slightly treated as gap filler in between cutscenes and battles. While it's fun to be able to roam free the vast landscapes and carry out tasks, I mostly enjoyed speeding through the air and destroying the environment as a human bullet, passing through rocks and mountains. I enjoyed it way too much, in fact, as my character forced himself through the terrain and fell off the level into oblivion. But I was able to recover from this glitch by flying back to the surface. There are enough tasks to keep you busy, as you'd expect in an RPG. Some of these side quests require you to to spar with iconic characters, save someone from danger, or carry out the somewhat compulsory fetch quests. But if you're struggling and need a stat boost, look no further than having a full course meal. Ingredients are purchased or found during your playthrough. The pacing of the battles is split into cutscenes and fights, and although they're delivered to replicate the thrill of the show, some may find them slightly tedious and disconnecting. Aside from that gripe, the greatest quality it offers, however, are those battles. Some see you teaming up with allies against some seriously difficult foes. By holding the R button, you can request an assist attack or defensive move from them, but nothing compares to those synchronized combos, where in true Dragon Ball fashion, the enemy will be simultaneously attacked by all party members, using a barrage of punches, kicks, and fire blasts. There is some repetition out in the open world. Outside of the story fights, you'll encounter the same enemy 
enemies multiple times. There's some variety in the form of villainous enemies who offer an increased challenge and have a fiery purple glow around them, but for better or worse there is quite a bit of repetition. The developers have managed to create a series of interactive episodes that fans and newcomers will definitely enjoy, albeit those looking for a deep RPG might feel a bit deprived by some of the more simple and shallow mechanics. Those elements, although numerous, don't feel as fleshed out as one would hope. Still, at its core, it's a solid brawler. The controls are tight enough, and the battling only requires the press of the A button for melee attacks, combined with others to do combinations. It was nice that you could map the super attacks to different buttons. They've kept it quite streamlined. My only issue with the controls occurred at the start of my playthrough when attempting to fly at high speeds and collect orbs in the sky. Although this is a common theme within games that require piling a character or vehicle in a 3D setting, it took some getting used to, and certainly will appeal to fans of the series. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20, and the control scores 17 out of 20. They really have captured Akira Toriyama's notorious style and it feels like a high definition version of the anime. I spent most of my time capturing the footage on a decent sized display but also in handheld mode. I prefer the experience in handheld, it just looks crisper on that screen and the load times were okay. The mapping system wasn't the best, the radar map used for the area is limited on how far it can be zoomed in and out, making it feel a little redundant. This goes hand in hand with the text size in some menus, which can't be enlarged, something that in all honesty should be standard on all Switch games. Some of the character animations and lip sync isn't quite as good as I would have liked, but for the overall art style it feels like minor flaws, especially when you consider the vastness of the levels. I didn't encounter or notice any pop in in the distance, and while I did notice some slight frame rate drop during the cutscenes, the world has a lot of small details, such as blades of grass scattered around in the fields and different lighting effects used for fireballs. Going in I was quite concerned how it was going to run on Switch, but I think they've done a fine job overall. Visual score 17 out out of 20. Many of the show's songs are found here from the suspense-filled saxophone tunes to the brilliant opening scene. The music, sound effects and voice acting are of a decent to high standard, enough to help the cutscenes and battles feel like the actual anime. Bandai Namco tend to utilise the original audio and actors for their ports, and this has worked well in its favour by keeping the consistency across the two. You'll even find the narrator from the show. I was pleased to see that you could set the original Japanese voices, and as far as audio goes, my only real gripe is some repetition. Audio scores 17 out of 20. The game comes in three different editions, and the standard edition download size is 16.5 gigs. The Deluxe and Ultimate have added digital content, with the latter including a music compilation pack of 11 different songs from the show. This was always going to have a high price due to the licensing. You might be able to grab it cheaper physically, but I see no real reason not to just go for the standard edition. Overall, I give value 16 out of 20. As a massive fan of Dragon Ball Z, I grew up to this series, and I hold it very close to my heart. In essence, we all want to be like Goku, strong, kind, and sometimes oblivious to the world around us. But when writing a review, you have to remove those rose-tinted glasses, and the quality is there. What it does right, it does really well. Those epic battles, the great cutscenes, and it walks the tightrope of fan service and catering for new players quite well. I just don't think they quite nailed the RPG mechanics. It gets an overall switch up score of 83%. A thanks to Asdin for the review, hopefully he's been able to answer all the questions you might have had about this release, and as always a big thanks for watching the channel. If you enjoy the content then consider sticking around, and all that's left to say is, well, you patrons are awesome, and for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys! See ya!